are animals, we crave the ability to be we. I know it's called me and it's we and these might have sounded differently. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a disco now? Yeah, it's it's oh. an after party, so it's uh, now we go with the yeah. flash. My goal in life is to be a laptop sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and despite the best ministrations of your wife, you still look ugly. <laughs> it's a great honor, Mr. Jaffe. It's always nice to be with you. I'm so happy to be with you. Um, I'm honored. Thanks for doing this, too. It's a real service to the community. Thank you for doing this, um, Joseph, for doing Corona TV in general. And, um, it's your gift to the universe, and it's appreciated. Very human, and I like that. Look at you! You are I mean, insane! How did I do that? You're how insane! Did I do that? You're insane! <laughs> Hello, everybody. December 3rd. Welcome to the light. Welcome to the sun. Welcome to the sunflowers. Welcome to life. Welcome to light. Welcome to Corona TV. And today, very appropriately, is... It's national, pa national Hug Day, I guess. National Pass on a Hug or Give Someone a Hug Day. Uh, basically, just just hug someone. Hug someone. I'm hugging you right now. I feel, you know, I feel maybe like, uh, who is that? That uh, he, I think he was a Turkish, I, the, the I hug you, I kiss you guy. That's how I feel today. That's what I want to do. I want to give you a big hug and a big kiss. I want to give a big hug as well. Uh, to all of my friends that are celebrating birthdays on Facebook today, uh, Fallon and John, Steve, Esther Lee, Steli Payne, uh, Sandy Milberg Hawkins, uh, crushing it at the moment. I'm even going to say happy birthday to Mark Joyner, who is a uh, cranky, crusty, and, uh, and a crabby man at the best of times. Hopefully he watches the show and he changes his whole outlook on life. Also, of course, I want to wish happy birthday to all of my LinkedIn friends, uh, Todd Isaacson, Peter Cock, uh, Stephen Zelenka, all of you, happy, happy birthday. The person that I want to give the biggest hug to, of course, is my guest today. Uh, maybe the most famous of all guests on the show. It's Dr. Harry Cohen, shrink, coach, husband, father, restaurateur, serial entrepreneur, speaker, author, uh, and a man that just makes me smile uh, from ear to ear. And he will be on the show uh, shortly. But first, I want to talk to you about certainly uh, a common theme today. Uh, I want to talk to you about the light. I want to talk to you about the light. Bill Maher has a great bit that he uses from time to time. I don't know this for a fact. I just know it's true. That's kind of how I feel and how I think about happiness and specifically the ability to choose happiness. Whether we're talking about optimism, positivity, or the light, it's a choice, really. We can choose to be lemons or lemonade people, and our choice impacts others. Today's guest will talk about the wonderful, glorious heliotropic effect and why it's so important in today's VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. But in today's soliloquy, I want to talk about that choice, the proverbial fork in the road. Is it in fact free choice? Are we influenced by others to make that choice? What if it's the wrong choice? How will our choice impact and affect others? And specifically, how do we choose light over darkness, especially during dark times? Choosing light, it would seem, is easy. Who wouldn't want to opt into sun over salt? So why don't enough of us make this choice? And if you ever catch yourself in a moment of weakness and you don't like the person sneering back at you in the mirror, how can you train yourself to act otherwise? Is happiness, in fact, learned? I have one more question. What happens when salt meets sun? In other words, when a happy-go-lucky optimist comes head-to-head -head with a person who is down on their luck, and at war with themselves and the world. Is a top of the morning to you akin to pouring gasoline on a fire or sustaining the original metaphor, pouring salt on an open wound? Look, I don't have all the answers, to be sure, but I do know that like most things in life, it's never binary. The key to everything can be found in shades of gray versus an extreme black or white, dark or light. 
You've all heard the saying, the darkest time is just before dawn, but I've actually heard that the saying is inaccurate. In fact, the time right before dawn is not darkest, but in fact drizzled with hints of light, a sneak preview into the gift of another day, a cascade of colors, a series of gradients of hope. So no matter how down or how low you feel at any time in your life, remember that it all begins with a choice, sun or salt. I choose sun. Well, I'll tell you someone else who certainly chooses sun, who chooses light, who chooses sunlight is Dr. Harry Cohn. Harry is a shrink, coach, husband, father, restaurateur, serial entrepreneur, speaker, and chairman of the Detroit chapter of Friends of the Children. Currently, he's an executive coach on retainer at several companies to help the executives learn how to hone their leadership skills to become more heliotropic, and we'll find out about that soon. For the last 12 years, Harry has also owned a successful restaurant in Ann Arbor, Michigan, called the Black Pearl, which allows him the opportunity to practice the principles he teaches. And yes, they are still open as of now. A few years ago, Harry gave a TEDx talk centered around heliotropic leadership. The principles discussed in this TED talk resonated with, with so many people so strongly that it inspired him to spread the message to as many people as possible, not just leaders. His latest book, Be the Sun, Not the Salt, distills his best advice into one bite-sized package, simple wisdom meant to inspire and remind readers to be their best selves. And I'm thrilled to welcome him on the show. Dr. Harry Cohen, welcome to Corona TV. Well, thank you so, so much. That was such a beautiful soliloquy. I'm done. What more can I say? You articulated that so sweetly, dude. Thank you, Joseph. Well, well guess why? Because it was inspired by you. Oh, please. I've watched many of your shows in preparation for this. And honestly, I'm so impressed. I told you this in a little pre-talk, like, oh, I am not worthy. You've had some amazing guests. and. Um, I really appreciate what you're doing, what you've done, and the fact that you get it completely. This is an ongoing, lifelong pursuit, and um, I love that you do what you do, that I'm allowed to speak to you and your audience in this way. So thank you, my brother. Thank you. Well, th thank you uh, as well. And you know, when we were in the green room, uh, just before the show went live, you you actually said, I'll see you later, and you blew me a kiss. And I, and I, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's so important now for people to start, you know, saying things like I love you or I love this or hugging or kissing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. even even in this, you know, uh, uh, Kyle McGuffin says, even in the socially distancing world, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's physical distance. It's not social distance. <laughs> totally. <laughs> this, it, Kyle's that was to Kyle, social, right? I, yes, of course. Uh, guys, this is all a metaphor and real. I mean, my love of this work is that it's based on science. It's not my opinion. I really don't care what I think. I really want to know what wisdom says. Is it true? Well, let's do more of that. Let's do that which works. We know the genuine expressions of affection and kindness and liking and love impact us and the other. It's not just the other that gets it. We are uplifted when we do a kind deed. We, I mean, this is the amazing stuff. It shows up in your blood. When when we do a kind deed for anyone in any form, the person gets it in their blood. I think it's oxytocin, might be something else. And we feel it and an observer watching the beautiful exchange feels it as well. So that it's empirical, it's not an opinion. This stuff is real, it works. My thing is, if you understand this, you can't function the same after you know. So I want more people to just get the simple, simple idea that being the sun, being uplifting, being kind, being virtuous, being any of the things that we already are, we're already this wonderful way, many of the times, even the curmudgeons that you speak of, if we can do that more, we're better and the world is better 
period, full stop. Your point in your soliloquy about the path and the road, we can choose that. And forces do influence us, both our historical family forces, our immediate culture, the dominant culture. Yes, it all influences us. But you know what? Even within that unbelievably dominant culture or our family culture, you can still make a choice to be the sun and not the salt, to be uplifting to others as opposed to pouring salt on the roots. And and I just want to figure out more better ways to, to get other people to go, oh, you know, it's so true. Yes, 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 we know it's true. In one of your talks or one of your guests said, um, don't take notes, take actions. And, and that's the whole point of this. This isn't about, you don't have to read any more books. It's the last book I ever want to read, although I'll keep on reading and keep on learning. But it's that simple is to take the actions to make those choices, Joseph. I, I saw uh, actually uh, the interview that's on your YouTube channel, which I'll share uh, later. Um, you were interviewed on one of the news, um, uh, one of the news shows, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you actually said you kind of don't even have to read this book to get it. And she was kind of taken aback. She was like, "Wait, you just said you don't have to actually buy this book or read this book, but yep. but you should buy it, right?" And you're like, "I guess," but but your point was. You know, like you're going to get it from the cover of the book if you choose. Cool. But there's there's a lot more to you and to that idea because, you know, I was actually like jotting it down as well. And you say the website is a resource. Um, mm -hmm. The book is a tool and our social platforms are a way to spread the ideas. So each mm -hmm. one of these mm -hmm. has an action and therefore a resultant reaction. And I love the fact that you were like just saying, don't just go to our website, subscribe to our channel, you know, read the, the newsletter, buy the book. You're like, <laughs> what you really are saying is live this, put yes, it into practice. Yes, yes, yes. And by the way, I'm talking to myself. It's not like you people need to. No, no, no. We, let's keep it really simple. I mean, I spent my whole life, I'm 65 years old as a shrink and as a seeker and as a person who's trying to learn a better way to help people. That's my life. Oh my God, I figured it out. I figured it out. Well, I didn't figure it out. I just I just captured what the research has said so that you don't have to do anything other than, oh, wait a minute. And my son or salt in this given moment, mm, I was a little salty. Okay, so do the next right thing, whatever that might be. And boom, we're good. Now, there's plenty to read and learn and understand about how to do that more better, effectively, quicker. But that's it in a nutshell, Joseph, and I know you get this. So I want you and your brilliant marketing mind and all the people who tune into this channel to think about, yeah, 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 I know. Everything he's saying, I already know. Yes, it's true, we do. It's how do we get ourselves and others to do it more, period. This much, this much. I'm talking about myself. And I got some of that from some of your guests. The don't bore us, get to the chorus. I wanna get to the chorus. I mm. want to get to the sticky. Oh, that's right. I was being salty. Okay, that, I, I know what I know what I need to do. I need to apologize and go clean that up. Okay, I, that's I it. was. You're referring to Bruce Turkel, and uh, Bruce was on my community show uh, last week. Which you know, you now have uh, you have the keys to the door for the community shows because as of this Friday, uh, every single Friday is now dedicated to previous guests what i realize is with 200 guests at the end of the year i i just want them to come together i want all mm -hmm. of us to come mm -hmm. together i don't need to keep on bringing on new people when when i want when i'm making friends these are real friends bruce and i had were on zoom yesterday and he reminded me about a great line he said he said he said uh good uh, he said um he said uh a good brand makes you feel good. A great brand makes you feel good about yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, again, it focuses us on where is the light shining, on ourselves or on others? And if we can actually put the spotlight on others, um, it is the most uh, ultimately, you know, ultimate selfless act, which is to kind of have to shine the spotlight away from ourselves. Yes, so there it you is. go, Bruce. I just, you know, the, <laughs> Harry mentioned you. I mentioned you. So I wonder if Bruce's ears are ringing right now. All I know is that people get this because it's simple. And if we can make it simpler for more people to get it and operationalize it, and if Bruce can help in that regard, 
let us enlist all of the people that have been on your show who want to help spread positivity and optimism um, because all of the virtues are, are wonderful. So let's spread them more into our cultures, into our lives a little bit more. I had this kick-ass insight just recently. I walk every morning in the woods with my dog and I try and make good use of that time. Mostly I'm just staring at the trees and counting my blessings and doing it as a gratitude walk these days. But I had a pebble in my shoe just the other day for about a mile and it was bugging me. How, how big do you think it was? It was a half the size of a grain of rice when I finally stopped and took it out of my shoe. Why? I mean, little things matter. It's the, it's this big insight for me is that it's all about the little things. It's all about, I mean, you brought up me blowing you a kiss or saying hello or saying good morning and, and, or not saying good morning or not saying hello. It's in the little things. There's no such thing as little things. Somebody was teasing me, said, are you saying we should sweat the small stuff? Yes, yes, actually I am. Sweat the real small stuff, not, not anxiety, stress, sweat, but like little things matter. So pay attention to the little ways that we can be the sun and not the salt. You don't have to change who you are. You ain't gonna do that. I think I think the beautiful thing about being on the show, because you know, in my what I call uh, I, call, I I say our lives now are what's known as uh, PP and AP, right? Pre-pandemic and after pandemic. Well, pre-pandemic, I was a marketer, uh, mm -hmm. so you get free marketing uh, consultation and advice. So now the beautiful thing is, uh, uh, please, guys, look out for Dr. Harry Cohen's third and fourth book uh, and fifth book called Pebble in My Shoe. Sweat the small stuff and little things matter. You could actually could actually be one book with three titles. How about That's that? All. You actually Bye. publish it three different ways with three different covers. But but I mean that 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 is a, it's such a true uh, beautiful point. But you know that there are um, a lot of uh, comments coming in, and I want to get to them. But you know okay. you mentioned you mentioned uh, things that you do, and I I want to take a step back and 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 understand. Uh, Dr. Harry Cohen, uh, you mentioned that you go for walks and uh, we actually sent our uh, crack photographers uh, to uh, follow you on one of your walks, spy, follow, potato, potato. So we, we got this photo, this, uh, you know, very accurate photo uh, of you walking. Um, but what was really interesting about this is you've now walked over a, a thousand miles uh, since this thing started. So you're kind of like, I don't know, the Forrest Gump of, uh, of pandemic walks. Um, and, and I think it kind of combines, I mean, not only, you know, not only have you walked a thousand miles in the woods, what you call forest bathing with your dog appropriately named YOLO, right? Um, but it combines with something else about you where you said, I can spend hours mm. of my day gazing at nature, contemplating the nature of life, doing absolutely nothing without guilt. So, so you, you seem like you're a man that is at peace. There's just <laughs> peace around you. Um, talk a little uh, bit about these two, how these two moments in your life combine and why they're so important. Um, I, honestly, it's because of, of studying this stuff for years and years and years. I mean, I mean, when I say studying it, I really want to understand what is true scientifically. And we know that exercise and being in nature are two habits or practices that help the human being in so many different ways. Everybody knows how good exercise is. What people don't fully appreciate is how great nature is. But read five studies and you go, damn, it's really good for you. I'm a nut for broccolis and blueberries, bro broccoli and blueberries. I like superfoods. I like literally eating broccoli and blueberries, but I also look to understand what are superfoods? Superfoods are foods that are high in super nutrient value. I want to understand what's really good for us. We know that nature is really good for us. We know that um, being around loved ones is really good for us. We know that, that exercise is really good for us. I want to lean into all of those things that are good for the human spirit. Now, I have been fortunate that I've lived a good or you know, quite frankly great life and i live in this amazing place i built a home on a lake next to 40 square miles 40 miles of trails that walk in a in a, a large um park in michigan the waterloo state recreation area so i happen to have a a place where i stare at nature i live in nature and i get to walk in nature 
but I also know how good it is for us. And so I try deliberately every day to do all the things that are that are good for one to do because I believe in, you know, practice, practice, practice gives you the benefit of the goodness. So I just dig this stuff. And by the way, you know, when you asked me to give you some thoughts, I didn't know that you were going to post those things. It might sound a little weird that I can stare and do nothing for hours and hours. I mean, I'm at that stage of my life where all I want to do now is figure out how to explain this, I mean, live a good life, but also get more people to understand, wow, this is available to me. Mm-hmm. What's the best What's the best exercise to do? The one you do. <laughs> how about gratitude? Yeah. Should I practice that? Yes, yes, yes. There's so many things that we can do. And, and I want to live that. I want to be that. And um, I want to help more people before I die. Well, speaking speaking of mortality, there was one other fact, uh, and now I'm now I'm not going to mention it in fear of the fact that that I mm. I can or can't. But before I say that, you know, it was interesting because w- one of the questions that we got was, w- when did you discover these truths as as fundamental? So mm. I will mm. I will lob it over to you to say that third fact that you provided. If you want to talk about it, um, very simply, and- I'm not afraid to talk about what he's teasing. What he's dancing around is that I have uh, I have bladder cancer. It's a good cancer to get. I say that because my particular form of cancer is a cancer that's very treatable. Most people die with it as opposed to from it, and so I'm not afraid to talk about it because when it happened a couple of years ago, and I'm still in treatment. Every 90 days, I go and find out if it comes back or not. It's a it's a delightful blessing to remind us of what we already are supposed to know, our mortality, it's supposed to be on our left shoulder at all times. But but having cancer just reminds me, just like the book, hey, dude, life is short, tick tock, make use of it. That's the good part of having cancer, it really, really, really is, at least my particular kind of cancer. And in terms of when I discovered this, honestly, I have been a seeker since I was uh, 16, 16 years old, 18, I lived in an ashram in in India for a while, and I wanted to understand the nature of God and the universe. And and so I want to know the truth. And so empirically, the sages have written for thousands of years that we should practice virtuous behaviors. That is not new information, okay? All the ancient paths, all of them articulate do good in some form or fashion, okay? And so Okay, I got that covered. So is there some more empirical reality to this? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of empirical truth around uh, the practice of these virtuous behaviors, these virtues like gratitude, compassion, forgiveness, kindness, authenticity, vulnerability. Brene Brown speaks about it beautifully. They're fabulous. They're not just good feeling things. They infuse your world with goodness and health and well-being and others as well. Holy shit. Let's do more of that. And so how I discovered, I mean, I've been a seeker of this, but once um, the positive psychology is the study of positive deviance, that is people who seem to be incredibly happy and fulfilled and successful and joyful in spite of all their life circumstances, what's up with them? So that's the study of these people. Well, I've been doing this for years. Oh, <laughs> there's there's science behind this? Oh yeah, so lean into it more. So that, I mean, I've been studying it and practicing it and trying to live it for my whole life as do all good people who are trying to become better people. Um, I just know that the simpler it can be, the better, period, full stop. And I can talk and talk and talk and talk but at the end of the day, are you kind to your brother and your sister? Period. Did, were you sweet in that moment? Can you can you take this present moment and take a deep breath and go, oh my God, is my cup runneth over or what? So, I mean, that's all intellectual, but I know that it's true and it's not intellectual. You know, well, is love really real? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. So I, I've been practicing this for a long time, but it is not my stuff. I'm just trying to distill it to make it easier for people to to answer the question. Yeah, but what about when you got a, a yeah, but what about the answer is always the same. You know, be kind. 
to yourself or to the person you're in front of? Well, how do you hold people accountable when you're being a positive leader? With effort, with deliberate intent and practice. Yeah, you can be kind. I mean, you're a parent, Joseph. You know, this is a, a dear friend of mine, Carl, shared with me that good parenting, good leadership is equal parts loving and demanding. Okay, I love you, sweetie. Now go to bed. Both parents, you know, as a parent, you got to, you know, I love you and you got to feel how much I love you. And I got to set boundaries and limits and tell you when you're messing up and tell you that you can be better. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, one of my sons just texted me and said, where, where's the show? I'm sorry. I know you're on, but <laughs> you know, I love that, that even one of my kids is going to watch this and maybe they will, maybe they won't. I hope they're, they're watching now. I hope no, so. I, I, and, and if they are watching now, they're so proud of you. And, uh, and, uh, I was, I was just, I wasn't leaning in, I was leaning back and I was just, with, just enjoying every aspect of you looking occasionally at, at, at some of these questions. And, you know, Steve said life, is, uh, beautiful takeaways, right? Life is short, TikTok, let's make use of it. Uh, Tom, eat superfoods, do super things, simple, powerful, indeed, uh, super. Um, mm -hmm. You know, David Libby says he, he writes 10 gratitudes almost daily, life-changing. Um, and, uh, and by the way, Ethan Cohen says he's watching right now. <laughs> So, so, oh, I so, love that. So there, so there you go. Um, and there's Connie um, <laughs> as well. So you know what she's referring to? Something that yeah. I've never seen before, which I absolutely loved. Uh, Monty Lacey says, our entire staff was inspired oh, by the book and we'll be happy to provide a copy of the book to anyone watching now. Compliments of Bozard oh. Ford Lincoln. So by the way, if you're thinking of, of a car, it's got to wow. be, uh, it's gotta be <laughs> at Ford Lincoln, and it's got to be at Bozard Ford Lincoln. And even if you don't live in Michigan, then you, <laughs> should, you should make a plan to go and return and pay it forward back to Monty and his staff. I mean, that's amazing. Wow. That is amazing. And honestly, let me just tell you what they did. They fell in love with this simple idea so much. They bought like a ton of books. They bought 2,500 books to give out to all of their employees and their employees' customers. Whenever they buy a car, they give them this as a gift to say, listen, I hope this uplifts your day. I mean, how sweet is that? I, I mean, I'm I'm just over, over overwhelmed with gratitude and appreciation that, that they exist out there. And I so appreciate that, Monty. And what can I say? Thank you again. You know, when, uh, when Deborah Wall... Uh, who is General Motors' uh, chief marketing officer, came on the show. She said, one of the three things I want to talk about is the heliotropic effect. And mm -hmm. I was so enthralled by it. And I was like, I'm mm -hmm. going to save it for the right time at the interview. And then I realized we completely ran out of time. And I never got to discuss with her the heliotropic mm -hmm. effect. And I will okay. not make that, that mistake uh, today. So <laughs> I, I want you to introduce the okay. heliotropic effect Tell us the science behind it and obviously how that then impacts and, and features in, in your wonderful, wonderful book, Be the Sun, Not the Salt. Thank you, Joseph. So the heliotropic effect refers to this phenomenon in nature in which all living systems, including us, are drawn to energy which sustains life, which is why the sunflower tilts towards the sun. It is drawn to the energy of the sun which we also are drawn to in other people. Po people can be heliotropic. That means positive energizing, literally filling the other person, us, with a feeling of, of goodness, of well-being. This was articulated by a professor at the business school, Michigan Ross Business School, Kim Cameron, and I fell in love with the science of, oh, so that's what... I have try, been trying to articulate, which is to be this good person, to be this virtuous person, this being a positive energizer thing isn't just nicey nice. His research shows that positive energizers in organization are contagious, okay? The contagion effect is it does so many wonderful things for the individual person and for the whole company that the, the positive energizing effect of being heliotropic, of being virtuous in all the different ways that people are is remarkable in terms of its effect on the person, the organization, 
um, their health, well-being, et cetera, et cetera. So, oh my God, that there's science behind what we intuitively know, being kind and good and virtuous makes us feel good and others feel good. But here's the real deal. Here's what's going on. This is this force. Oh my God, if we could tap into that, if we understood that, why wouldn't we surf on that and groove on that and let that fill our sails? That's the awesome part of the positive heliotropic effect. In the research though that Kim Cameron did of people in organizations, you ask somebody, you know, how heliotropic is he a positive energizer on a scale of plus 10? Oh my God, being around him makes me feel fabulous versus like minus 10, you know, 10 minutes in a room with him. And I, and I, I feel like I have to go take a nap. I'm, I'm completely depleted. The negative effect is actually more contagious. So that's why it's equally important to be mindful of being, of not being a negative energizer, of being the salt. People want to talk about the positive, which is really important, but it's equally important to, to really lean into the, to the not of the negative, the little tiny, like a tiny grain of salt seems real small, put it in your eyeball. You'll feel it in the same way that the tiny slights, great professor, uh, Christine Porath, Georgetown wrote a book in civility or uh, overcoming incivility. The impact of incivility on people's health, well-being, and the culture is remarkable. It's the it's like the science of negativity. When when someone is incivil to someone else, just witnessing the incivility makes the person's performance go down, creativity down, go down, um, problem solving go down. You don't even have to be the recipient of the incivility of the salt behavior. You can just watch it. So the salt stuff is so negative. I was just on a Zoom call with. 18 business owners literally talking about this. And the questions were, what do you do when you have salty people working for you? I'm saying, dude, and what are you going to do? It's your, your people. You're allowing this. You have to own this, take this on and not have tolerance for salt, salty behavior. When I say not have tolerance, you know, have the conversation with people about women. That's not kind. What, what's going on here, man? That's not how we roll. That's not the culture we want here. That's, you know, I know it's small, but you got to not rip, rip them a new one when you're disappointed with them. So my point is that this heliotropic effect on the positive side is so powerful for the rest of our lives, we could spend nothing but leaning into all of the virtues that we already mm. practice and, a little bit more. And, and the fact is, you know, going back to the small grain, you know, you spoke about the small pebble. Now uh -huh. we're talking about a small grain of salt. Yep. We still live in a world where bad news travels mm -hmm. faster. Bad news gets better ratings. People are more attracted uh, no. to bad news than good news. So how do we, we almost have to reprogram ourselves to welcome and embrace, reject, you know, reject yeah. the darkness That's and right. embrace and value the light as opposed to That's take right. it for granted. And, and by the way, what you just said is very true. People don't realize this. Why The negative is more powerful than the positive. Why? That shouldn't be. Well, sorry, it is. Well, why don't we have good news stories? Because they don't sell. We love negativity. We love gossip. We love when, when, we, when we get into what else did he do wrong? So our brains are wired to see difficulty and, and the negative. Okay. So what we do about that, Joseph, Joseph is if we now know that, and now we do, uh-oh. You have to be very careful about what you eat. You have metaphor and literal. What are you putting in your mouth? What are you looking at? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you around? What are you ingesting? I say to my sister, was it something you ate? In other words, who did you speak with recently that made you start to feel that way? I can read an article. I mean, this past eight months, you know, with the election and all that, it was very hard for me to not go into dark, media uh, rabbit holes. And I, when I find myself in, I go, oh, uh oh, uh oh, I have to pull myself out. We have to be very mindful, not ruthless, but mindful about what we put in our bodies and minds and who we hang out with. Be good company and hang out with good company. This, you're good company. I wouldn't have done this if you weren't so sweet and wonderful. You know what I mean? You are heliotropic. You know that. But that's the whole point. We want to hang out with people who are heliotropic. We want to avoid people who are salt. And to the extent we can, 
the negativity, which is to your point, all around us. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I mean, I'm just not going to gauge it. Did you hear what he did? Why? Why are you telling me this? Oh, did you hear? I mean, come on. Everyone likes well, to talk also, about. I mean, I mean, it, 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 it is a sin, the sin of gossip. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 what I learned, by the way, what's interesting uh, in is that good gossip uh, can often be as bad as bad gossip because mm -hmm. it may not be true. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the classic example is finding out someone is pregnant and going up to them and then congratulating them and then finding out that something happened. And so yep. that's it's so interesting how gossip itself, even good gossip, it's almost this idea of don't focus on other people, on other people's lives. Focus on yourself and your relationship with people as opposed to by second and third and fourth degree. Yeah, it's true. And it takes effort. The, the key thing is it really takes effort to see what you just said, to admit, well, what I, I didn't mean anything by it. There's something that I wrote in that book I think is incorrect, which is impact, in, in, motive will carry the day if you're, if your motive is pure, intent will carry the day. Well, that's not exactly true because while your motive might be pure and your intent might be innocent and lovely, if the impact is quite negative, you have to re take responsibility for that. So both are true. So in, in the, you know, the pregnant example, well, I didn't mean anything by it. Yeah, I know, but it still hurt. And you own that. We got we to gotta own that. So mm -hmm. I'll own anything that I do. Well, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Okay. Well, you might not have meant to, but you still hurt someone. Okay. I love that. The the concept of essentially intent versus impact. Mm -hmm. Um and um and 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 quite frankly, when when the impact is positive based on the intent, when there is congruence or uh, or or a good fit, great. But when yeah. there is that disconnect, that's when to to your point, we have to step up and own it. You, you you speak about something else and of course what I just put onto the screen is is this wonderful wonderful book uh, be the sun not the salt um, I think people now probably get from that prelude or preamble uh, this choice um, the idea of the grain of salt the importance of tilting towards and choosing to face the light and be attracted to the light um, as well. Um, but you talk about other things as well, uh, because there is a word enlightenment, which obviously has the word light in it, mm -hmm. spreading wisdom we can use. And then you came up with this wonderful, you said spread wisdom, but not TBU. What is TBU? This is extremely, extremely important. And I love the phrase once I heard it decades ago, TBU is true, but useless. Do you remember the FDA food pyramid? It was a pile of information about how you're supposed to eat. Completely useless information. Did not, does not help people make good food choices. True, but useless. So my life's work is to try and take that which is true and make it useful, helpful, how can I use this stuff? I wrote this book with one page, two page chapters so that you can read it and go, got it. I know. Okay. I got it. I got it. Useful. That I can use. That I can use. And the idea is not that something is interesting. Okay. So what? How can you be a better person after, after ingesting what you just took in? I mean, I, I watched several of the ones that you recommended that I watch prior to this. And I took, I told you, you know, chorus, you know, don't bore us, get to the chorus. That that intro thing that you know, I think it was Rich, Rich Mulholland. And somebody, one of your guys said, you know, make sure that your first slide, the intro, make sure you curate the intro of your bio. I thought that was a lovely, useful, sweet point. There's more. Your guy, the surfer guy who talked about Will, you know, yeah, I, will, I will, I will. I will, I will. I found that magnificent. I love that. It w why? Because it was useful. I watch a thousand videos and, and, and read lots of books. I can't remember any. And yet there are a few that I can because they're useful. And I want this to be useful. Like, 
Sean Thompson, by the way, you know, I realize it's so funny, just a little reflection that I, I said, here are four or five of my favorite interviews, and I haven't updated that in a while. By the way, nor should I, because they still are my favorites. But Sean Thompson was interview number 49, and you are interview number 159. And um, you know how I really, this is already one of my favorites, but what I've realized is that yep. all of my guests are like my children. I love mm -hmm. them all equally, but in different I, ways. <laughs> I understand. I understand. How you feel about I, Ethan, I know, I know. I, I, it's true. Hey, what about Jeremy's out there? He's preparing for an interview, so I, I give him free, free uh, <laughs> excuse. Um, but this is useful. This material, the work that you're doing is useful. And, and that's what I want this work to be. I want, somebody said, leave this in, in, out on your desk, leave it on the coffee table, leave it in the bathroom, refer to it. I have it there not just because I wrote it and I talk about it and that's when I'm doing my work, but it also reminds me, and that's all I want it to do, which is everything, which is to remind us, okay, that's right, I got to apologize. Oh, that's right. No, I just got to do the next right thing, okay? Yeah, the the reminder. Oh, by the way, that story you told, I don't know where you told it about, you know, you, your dog was, was uh, yep, off loose or something. I was thinking something. about it. I know. And the beauty, I mean, that's the microcosm of our world, which is you do something, somebody, you know, snaps at you, you snap back, you replay it in your head. You say, I could have done it better. Yeah, of course you could. Next time you will. You know, exactly. And I felt gross. And I felt I gross. I didn't feel good did. about myself. And I felt, yeah, I know. And, 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 and I felt even worse about myself because I feel like I've grown so much and yeah. I've been yeah. on this journey and I realize how easy it is to slip, Harry, and just become pre-pandemic, Joe. Stop, Joe. Joseph, stop it right now. To stop feeling gross. You screwed up. I mean, so what? You screwed up. No big deal. Nobody was hurt. Move on. And I say that to you and to me. Oh, my God. We're going to screw up in the next 10 seconds. So what? You cut yourself some slack. You deserve it. Have compassion for yourself. No, you, yes, you, you know, you, you weren't that bad. I mean, you were bad. Yes, you were. Okay. And you felt gross. You were great. Great that you have the consciousness to go, oh boy, I can be better. Period. That's uplifting to be around. So move on. I, there are so many questions. And uh, I always say what we don't get to in the show, we'll do in the after show, which we certainly will. Um, but I want to just get to some of them because they're all um, amazing questions. Um, uh, Carissa, who just recently had a birthday, uh, uh -huh. said, how would you counsel a type A personality to embrace vulnerability as a virtue? So um, your personality is whatever your personality is. Yours happens to be type A. Vulnerability is a virtue. So you have to explore it yourself. None of this is, is what I think. It, you have to test this out in the laboratory of your own experience. If I say something to you, you have to say, yeah, well, let me see if that's true for me. Great. Go try being vulnerable today with another human being that you trust. Watch what happens. Guaranteed, if you're authentically vulnerable, not, man, not, not in a manipulative way, but you find a, a person with whom you can be psychologically safe, who won't abuse you in any way, shape, or form, and you are vulnerable, you'll notice something that happens. Now, I preamble that by find the right person. Because if you are vulnerable with someone who does not treat you with the appropriate care that you deserve, you will be protective of yourself because they treated you so. So you have to find the right person with whom to be vulnerable. But I would practice it a lot. I can tell you just like exercise. How do you know that exercise is good for you? I read a bunch of studies. Go try, just go walk for 20 minutes and watch what happens. Go tell me what you experience with a brisk walk, okay? In the same way, vulnerability is such a delightful virtue to continue to lean into and to practice. And the practice is sharing authentically what is real for you in a safe psychological environment. By the way, I've done a thousand of these exercises where you, in 20 minutes you, you create an opportunity for people to share perfect strangers with a little something that they're um, vulnerable with and they immediately feel closer literally in, in 10 minutes um 
you can feel close with another person and more connected by being vulnerable. But vulner vulnerability mm. has a lot more virtues, but a lot more um, virtuous effects. Um, but you got to test it out for yourself. There's, you know, there's a word that comes to mind, which is just with you, which is just do it. Stop thinking about it. Stop mm. overthinking it. Stop telling yourself, but mm. just do it. I mean, now, now I have, I have to say, I, I, uh, I always have a, um, a little uh, quote that I feel I wait for the right time to bring it in for my guests. And I saw this one, and I thought it was kind of interesting. And, and of course, you have to tell me if you, if you know who said this. We can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. I think that speaks to vulnerability and i think it speaks to the choice um so any idea who said that mm, mm. uh this is a long shot and i don't think it's right but nelson mandela uh very close he was actually uh two cells down on robin island with nelson mandela it was plato um okay so it wasn't <laughs> he, he, it was plato um but but it's you know um, it, it's an interesting, it's a very, very interesting statement um, mm -hmm. that I think brings in the choice and the fact that we are afraid to reveal the vulnerable <sighs> sides of ourselves. So, so people are afraid of many things. All people are afraid of things. Honor and accept and respect people's fear. It is what it is. It doesn't mean you should necessarily bow to that fear, but fear is real. And you know what I would tell people about that which they are afraid of is feel the fear and do it anyway. This is you mm. know like I'm afraid of public speaking. Yeah, okay, so what? Everyone is. It doesn't matter just what do we just, do, just it. do it. Just do it. This is back to your just do it. I mean, all the fears that we all have. Uh, so what? So what? Do it anyway. Do it in spite of all of the reasons. Yeah, but I grew up in a yeah, but I yeah, but it, none of the yeah but eyes. We can be better people no matter where we are on the continuum of goodness and we're all fine so yeah that's I, i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna build on yibbidize yeah but i spelled why I'm, I'm gonna um, yibbidize i'm not yibbidize but yibbidize harry you know a couple things one is helio the heliotropic effect there's actually something called that you practice called heliotropic leadership and and one mm. thing that that i just i'll take a small step back for a second which was very interesting because when Deborah Wall from GM, who I assume uh, I, I know reads your stuff and works with you, and you were going to surprise her by, by kind of like Zoom bombing, and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, but this time I get to wreak reward, a uh, wreak revenge, because <laughs> there is Deborah Wall Zoom bombing you. Hey, girl. How are you? Hi. Hi. I hope you can you hear me? Can you guys hear I, me? We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm like, here I am. I'm sitting in the sun, basking in the sun today, thinking of you and saying, you know, and as I listened to you, I got to listen to you for a little bit. I'm like, oh, you're so darn smart. So smart Aww. and so inspiring. So I'm so glad um, that Joseph allowed us to get on and for me to say like, thank you for all you've done in my life. You've been incredible. And by the way, um, I'm, I'm sending your leadership and ideas out to all of my team. And they're thrilled every time when I talk about it and I can guarantee you it's making me a better leader. So thank you, Harry. Love you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, Deb. How's your hip? How are you feeling? Oh my God. I'm Great. walking. I'm like moving. Everything's good. We've Survived another round of COVID. We've survived hip replacement. It's been like that, that kind of year. It's crazy. I, thank <laughs> you, Deb. I so appreciate that. I, I didn't want to send this out to anyone because I didn't know how it was going to go. If it goes great, I'll send it out to everyone after the fact. So I, I was debating whether to send it out to you or not. Thank you. Now I'm fine with it. I'm sending it out to the world. Oh, Deb, no, I oh nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> sorry. That's the truth. I, no, I'm sorry, and, but not sorry. And, and you Deb, know what? I, and, say, I wouldn't be here without you, Deb. Thank you. I wanted to. That's I wanted how the to. The world thank, works. That's how the Soviet stuff works. Oh, sorry, Joseph. Deb, <laughs> Deb, I want to. No, I want to thank you twice over. I want to three times. One for being on today and doing this. Two for coming on my show originally, um, mm -hmm. so soon after surgery, and three for introducing me to Harry. 
Um, my life is so much richer uh, because of uh, meeting both of you, but also for this incredible positive uh, conversation, which I know people watching and listening are, are feeling that light as well. So um, I, I hope you'll be able to join us for the Zoom after show as well, where we can continue the love fest. <laughs> I wish I could on that. I'm not going to make it, but I did just want to share that. And just really important for me to be here and be able to, you know, give you that gratitude, Harry. And, and thank I you, so Joseph, for the opportunity. Wow. That's a class act right there. I mean, this is a very <laughs> important person with a huge job. And here she takes the time to do this. She doesn't need to do something like that. That's pure goodness. Seriously, Deb means a lot to me. Well, th thank you. Thank you, Deb. Thanks for guys. Uh, popping by. I will see Bye. you soon. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's the truth, Joseph. I, I didn't send it out to the world because I honestly didn't know. Oh, I hope it goes well. Now I will. I feel great about this. So I'll send this out to the world. No, I, I, hope I, you I, I give you I give you a kiss back. And by the and by the way, I mean, I it's it's this has been one of the joys of the show as well, because you know, as I've done 150 interviews and I, and as I try and inspire other people to do this as well, um, you re and, and as I've given, I've given people kind of the same advice, just do it, do yeah, the yeah. show. And by the yeah, way, yeah. your first guest will be your hardest guest. Um, and the second guest will be exponentially easier than the first. And so it goes. And what I've realized through this process is the beauty of giving your guest a surprise number one mm -hmm. make yeah. them feel like they're the most important person in the world because they are yeah. and two is recognize the joy that can come from being on a show that you might not have known too much about or had some reservations but come mm -hmm. out feeling um like that was just something that you didn't expect yeah. under promise yeah. over deliver that's how Lovely. we should live our lives Yep. I want to know, is this clear? Do you think people get the simplicity, practicality, and value of what we're talking about? Is it sticky enough? Can we do a better job, Joseph? I mean, you get it. I get it. People get it. But is there a way that we can say, oh, my God, that is so good. And therefore, I now have the lens through which I view the world forever Sun or salt, sun or salt, oops, 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 ooh. Praise the living daylights out of the sun behavior in yourself and others and go, oops, I got to help him be you're, less you're, salty. You're asking the right question because, you know, earlier Tom said, how does Harry feel about our society right now when so many people seem to be living in the opposite way? So I think I've seen the comments today and people are wrestling with the fact we all get it, you know, okay. uh, one of, okay. I, rem I remember um, one of my mentors saying to me, marketing is common sense, but how many of us have common sense? So we all understand the path or get it. And yet somehow we don't all, there's a disconnect between what we preach and what we practice. So how do you answer what, what Tom said, which is, which is, if this is the truth, why yeah. are we veering off this path? So here's my answer to the Tom. Society, when, when I or others, I had this on the previous Zoom call, what about society and the, the norms now or incivility? I can't deal with society or the world, okay? I can deal with my world. So the, 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 how do I feel about the world and all those people and everybody, blah, 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 blah. I can tell you what I can, I got to do something about it. That's what, what I react to is, ooh, what can I do about it? I know what I can do about it. You're looking at it. I'm going to try and influence as many people as I can come in contact with by pouring. If you got a big vat of dirty water and you keep pouring a glass of water and it doesn't look like anything's making a difference, one more glass of water. One, what, the answer to my question is my job is to pour a clean glass of water into the dirty and a bunch before I die and a lot more so that maybe, maybe it becomes a little bit cleaner over time. That's what I can do. Society, I, I don't know about society. I don't know about the dominant culture. I know, I got work to do. I can influence a bunch of people. I better influence more. I bet I better influence more people. We better get on Good Morning America or the Today Show or whatever the hell we got to do to to why? How come this isn't the norm? How come people aren't saying, "Hey, man, I'm sorry for being salty this morning." No harm, no foul. I appreciate that you recognize that. Whoa! 
I, I mean, the litter campaign, Connie and I always talk about the litter campaign in the 70s. Remember the, the, um, the, the famous Indian crying, that, that, that ad, and, and it, it was helpful in a movement to get our country to stop littering. And it worked, and litter's not cool anymore. So my view of this work is that this is litter removal. This is incivility and, and salt removal. That if we collectively say, oh, there's another example of litter, interpersonal litter, don't do that. Hey, let me help you out there. There's a there's a trash can right over there. As opposed to, you know, yelling at people for how they're not wearing their mask properly. That, 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 don't do that. Don't be the, you know, the sun salt police. That was salty. You know, I, don't, I mean, that's just more salt. What I can do for society, I'm trying to, you're looking at it. You're looking at what I'm trying to do. I'm doing my part. What are you going to do about, you know, like, can you go help the, the perfect stranger? That's, well, I got one. I'm going one at a time, man. And that's how I think about our society. You know, uh, did Nelson Mandela really do any good for the world? I think so. <laughs> okay. I mean, how did he do what he did? Wow. Okay. So I want to be like that. I want to be like Viktor Frankl. I want to leave that mark on the world. I want people to go, oh my, I can do something in spite of all of this. I not only can do something, I am doing something while living in this shit show. And I'm yeah, making I'm it better. And and it comes down, it's very funny. Um, a lot of this comes down to there are all these axioms, right? Just do it the one step at a time, picking up one piece of litter. But another thing that rings true is, is it all begins with that person hopefully smiling back at you in the mirror, um, blowing you a kiss, yeah. giving yeah. you the hug. If you yeah. don't love yourself, how can you love others? And it begins with it's very interesting how all of this begins with, you know, uh, even Steve Garfield said, you know, uh, oh, sorry for cutting you off like that. It's the ability to catch ourselves, check yeah. ourselves with the very people that matter the most in our lives, our spouse, our children, our colleagues, our friends, and then use that as a, you know, idea virus to, to uh, the good kind to infect the world the right way. You got it, man. This is this is the good. Um, this in this is the vaccine for our time. The vaccine for incivility. Um, we want to inoculate, and we also want to spread this. We want other people to be contagiously affected by this. Not be worried about other people. The the oh, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Just that little moment. I want to be a better person ten years from now. But I'll I'll take I'll I'll go for today. I'll do today. And I just appreciate the hell out of the fact that we get to do this and and that at least a few people are listening and maybe we'll make a difference, Joseph. Uh, we, we will and we already are. And I think one thing I've seen through the show is just the ability to talk and to mm -hmm. listen and to mm -hmm. engage and to build and to help. Mm -hmm. um, this is part of the movement. And and you, uh, you might just be one of the Sherpas of this movement. I will, I will gladly follow you. Uh, and and uh, I want to share with people a whole bunch of ways to um, deepen their relationship and connection with you. Obviously, there's the book, Be the Sun, Not the Salt. Uh, what I really love as well is there's lots of these amazing little uh, giveaways. There's, there's the calendar. Talk a little bit about the calendar. Um, well, I, I, honestly, my team, the, there's a there's a marketing team that has put this together that th they they send me requests for videos. And can you do a series on gratitude or can you help us with this, that and the other? And I look at it, and go, oh, my God, that's great stuff. So it's nudgy little reminders to to practice this stuff. And we're just trying different ways to make it sticky. There's also uh, on the blog. Uh, 12 reasons uh, to gift be the sun, not the salt, the season. But I had to call you out. Actually, when I say call you out, I mean, I'm in deep, deep uh, agreement with number eight, which is to help rid your world of cilantro. Now, I know that you talk in metaphors uh, as well. And but but the metaphorical cilantro, nobody wants to ingest that because it's 
it's going to make you salty. So um, I, I'm glad that you and I uh, equally uh, want to help rid the world of cilantro. <laughs> Hold on, guys. You need to understand these are people who have a genetic condition that makes cilantro taste like soap. So it's a metaphor for that which you ingest that is not good for you, you know, whether that's people or media or whatnot. Wait a minute. Before we, before we have to go, you're going to ask me about a person who has influenced me in my life because I yeah, want to make gonna, sure I, to say I'm gonna get I'm going to get to that in one second, but I want to say yeah. that you can go to Be The Sun, Not The Salt and find out more connect with Harry on LinkedIn, connect with him on Twitter or connect with the movement on Twitter, uh, on Instagram as well, and actually join or subscribe to the movement on YouTube because Harry is creating and has created these amazing short bites of wisdom and, and love and light um, and uh, really makes a difference. So go and check out that as well. There are two more things that we'll do very quickly. Thank you for reminding me about uh, about the Corona question. Uh, and uh, I would have made sure that even in the Zoom after show, but Harry, which person living or dead has inspired you the most in your personal or professional life? So you asked me this right before we started. So I would have given a lot more thought to this because there's so many, oh my God, do I have to choose one? And I want to just share Mindy Holman, who is the chairman of the board of the Holman organization. And she wrote the foreword to the book. She's a woman who, is so magnificent and so humble in her, in the way that she operates. At one time I was having dinner with her and I said, Mindy, you, you know, you're a billionaire. You're the owner. You know, why, why would you need to, she's not a billionaire, but wealthy. And, and, but why do you need to work? You don't need to work. Why do you do this? And she said, Harry, she looked at me like, seriously? So to provide jobs and careers for people so that we can provide great lives for them and we can earn money and give it away to help more people. Like, of course, Harry, what, don't, isn't that what, don't you understand? Like, oh my God, it was, she has inspired me because of who she is, how she is. And I want to be that way where I'm now at this age stage of life where I want to help more people. And so the money I make is mostly going to be given away and I'll provide jobs and opportunities for people and um, do more good in the world. But that's a real person actually doing it. And um, such an inspiration to me. I I, I appreciate uh, learning about her, and uh, who knows, maybe maybe when she comes on Corona TV, you will surprise her, and we'll keep paying it forward. Um, we can't do but, that because now she'll know that I'm going to do that. So so, we'll, so no no, I'm not going to do that, but I will invite her. Yeah yeah, her wink. Um, <laughs> We're going to go over to the Zoom after show and continue this uh, beautiful tribute uh, to, to light, to sun, and to choosing sun. But before I do that, I just also want to make one more little, give you one more plug, which is you practice what you preach literally, figuratively, metaphorically, in terms of making sure people are putting good things in their mouth. Uh, you are hiring people. You are uh, making sure that people are doing okay during the tough times. You are the proprietor of the Black Pearl, uh, which is not uh, a ship in Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, but it's amazing that you've been able to actually take these principles. I would assume that the people that work there and the people that dine there are the happiest people uh, on this earth. Uh, uh, I would say second to, but maybe even leading Disney. Well, I would like to believe that too. That was our goal. And when we had a complement of 45 staff prior to COVID, I would say they were. And over 12 years, the, the culture has been magnificent to okay, to not great, to in varying degrees. Right now we have five people working there, but one, we'll get back and we'll try and create what we created before. And it is a living, breathing organism to do all the stuff that we're talking about. So it's, I'm very grateful for it. Dr. Harry, I'm very grateful for you. Uh, thank you for coming on today. We will continue uh, this conversation in the Zoom after show. But uh, as always, we uh, leave you in the in the capable hands of Miss Chuck Norris. You are Chuck Norris approved. There you go. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow.
Thank you for watching Corona TV with your host, multiple author and global keynote speaker, Joseph Jaffe. Corona TV is the show about hope, positivity, optimism, and if there's time left over, a little bit of marketing. The after show on Zoom starts right now at bit.ly slash Corona TV after show. If you like the show, tell a friend or two. Please subscribe to the show at coronatv.show. And if you want to get inside news, previews of upcoming guests, and much more, text Corona TV to 66866 or visit josephjaffe.com slash subscribe to sign up for the show's newsletter. And despite the best ministrations of your wife, you still look ugly. <laughs>